There's a poem that I've always liked by Edna St. Vincent Millay about a little ghost that appeared in her walled garden. I knew her for a little ghost that in my garden walked. The wall is high, higher than most, and the green gate was locked, and yet I did not think of that till after she had gone. I knew her by the broad white hat, all ruffled she had on, by the dear ruffles around her feet, by her small hands that hung in their lace mitts, austere and sweet, the gown's white folds among. I watched to see if she would stay, what she would do, and oh, she looked as though she liked the way I let my garden grow. She bent above my favorite mint with conscious garden grace. She smiled and smiled. There was no hint of sadness in her face. She held her gown at either side to let her slippers show. And up the walk she went with pride the way great ladies go. And where the wall is built in new and is of ivy bare, she paused and then opened and walked through a gate that once was there. All ghost stories, it seems to me, are about the past. What once was there, the gate that once was there, the girl that once was there. There are all kinds of ghost stories in which the, the, the phantom figures are inhabiting a world that we cannot see, and so their behavior seems to us strange. In Asheville, they tell tales of a ghost that appears outside the second story windows pacing back and forth of the tavern that is in a building that used to be a hotel. Well, many years ago, there was a balcony on that hotel, and the ghost is walking on the balcony that once was there. There are ghost sightings in Rome, where they see legions of Roman soldiers marching up the street, only the soldiers are low down with their torsos only appearing above the road because, you see, the soldiers are marching on a road that was much lower 2,000 years ago. So the past is haunting. My brother and I were playing baseball on the street outside of our house. Just the two of us playing baseball. I got a hit. He fielded the ball before I could round first, so I was held up at first, and this was a dilemma because I was still at bat. So I had to go back and take the next pitch. So we solved the problem by creating for ourselves ghost players that would take the place for the runner, right? Now, maybe you've done this too. It's a common trick for street baseball. So I went back to bat and I left a ghost player. We were playing in our shorts and our t-shirts barefoot, but I always imagined the ghost player in a full uniform, bill cap, cleat shoes, and he was there at first waiting for me to get another hit so I could drive him on home. And we would play this way, putting ghost players in place to fill in for the missing team that we had until it was time for dinner. We went inside to eat. Had dinner, finished the night inside, and I went into my room in my pajamas to get ready for bed. And my bedroom looked out onto the front of the house, out onto the street outside of our house. And I stood there looking out into the dark into the pool of light illuminated by the street lamp, right where we played baseball, and I realized I left a man at second. <laughs> there was a ghost player out there on the street. We never told him that the game is over. And I could clearly imagine him there, and then I began to think about all the other ghost players that we had invoked in order to play our game, and all those days, and suddenly I had a sleepless night, haunted by the idea of these ghost players that I'd left behind, these players of the past that we had conjured up and then left to drift in the world. I left that house 40 years ago, or rather I could say the house left me because when we went off to college my mother and father divorced and sold the house and so I could never go home again. But I was haunted by the house, by that past, you see. I would have 
lucid dreams of playing with our ghost players out on the street in front of the house and then going into the house for dinner. And as I would come into the house, I would see that the furniture was new and that it was a strange family sitting down to eat. And I would suddenly realize with shock that it was no longer my house now. It was someone else's home. And I would wake in my bed, sweating, sad, confused, sitting in the midnight light, clearing my mind and feeling the deep sadness of loss. These very lucid dreams, I might be in the backyard with my grandfather, Papa, collecting a bag of limes under the key lime tree to go in and make ourselves some nice fresh limeade and we'd go into the kitchen and see that the kitchen was completely remodeled. There was an entirely new family occupying that kitchen and that remember that my papa was dead long ago and I'd wake up again in the dark, sad and confused. And the most recurrent of these lucid dreams of home would involve my mother and myself. Sometimes my brother, sometimes my sisters as well. But always my mother and myself, we would be in our whole old home together. And we would know that it was not our own home together any longer. It was someone else's home. But my mother in the dreams would always reassure me, it's okay because they're off on vacation. So we can live here in the meantime while they are away. And then I would hear the sound of a car coming up into the driveway and an engine going off and doors opening and closing and somebody stepping up to the front door and the door opening and the shock of seeing the strangers and of them seeing me would wake me in my bed and again, scared and sad and confused, I'd remember it was not my home anymore. Mom died a little over a year ago. She spent her last years with us in Asheville, in a memory care unit. Her memory had been gone for 10 years and her body just lingered longer. Well, the siblings, my brother, my sisters, and I, and our families, we all decided to hold a memorial service for mom back down in our hometown in Fort Lauderdale. Mom loved to go to the beach at sunrise. So we took her ashes down there and Sunrise on a Sunday morning, we met at the beach and we waited and we watched as the sun came up over the smooth, clear sea and then we swam out with her ashes and gave her over to the current. Came back in and we all had breakfast together and we sat down to reminisce and my brother put together a PowerPoint slideshow and we had photo albums out and we poured over these albums. And I had an album, and in it were many photographs from our childhood in our old home. And on an impulse, later that afternoon, I decided I would go. I would go and see the old house. And I brought the photo album with me. So I came around the corner, 52nd Court, and there was the house. It had been remodeled, it now had a Spanish tile roof, and the what had once been an open-air carport was now a closed garage. The whole lawn was re-landscaped and there was new paving, but I could see that underneath all of that was the house that once was there. So I took the photo album and I walked up to the door and I did not know who lived there now and I, I, I I'd hoped that someone might be home. I knocked on the door. And after a little scuffling on the other side, the door opened, and there was a young mother. Over her shoulder, a 10-year-old boy, redhead. And I haltingly kind of explained myself and how I had grown up in this house and how we were back in town for my mother's memorial and that I had brought a, an album of photographs. I thought maybe they'd like to see what the house used to look like back in the 60s and the 70s. And they were very nice, they were very generous. They let me come on in and kind of have a look around. I didn't pry into their private spaces. They were theirs now after all. But they took the photo album out with interest and they opened it up on the table. And the father came in from the back and they were looking at the photographs. And I was telling the young boy about how my brother and I used to make forts, underground forts in the backyard and how we used to build our own skateboards. And, and the boy said, did you ever see the ghost? 
I said, well, yeah, I used to be haunted by these ghost baseball players, you know, we'd, we'd make up extra players to fill in for us when we played ball out in the street. And, he, and then the dad said, no, this is a child. We've all seen him. And then the mother said, honey, and she pointed at a photograph in the album. And they came and they looked at it together. And the boy said, yeah, that's him. And they agreed, yeah, it really, it, it. and then the mother said to me, do you know who this is? And there was a photograph of an eight-year-old boy, blonde hair, squinting in the Florida sun with a baseball bat leaning on his shoulder. It was me. It was a photograph of me. They said, that's the ghost. We've seen him a few times, usually like when we come back from vacation and we come in the house and he's standing there and then he disappears. And I realize I have been haunting my old house for 40 years. Rather, not me so much as an eight-year-old boy I once was. Still left behind the boy that once was there. Like those ghost players so long ago. He remained behind. No one ever told him the game is over.